All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Wood Gas Fire Builders Workshop. So today we're going to talk about the V3 housings. Uh, you know, as you know, one of the uh, uh, big concerns with the original design on this gas fire is the use of uh, propane tanks. There's several reasons why you don't want to use the propane tanks. Uh, they're dangerous to work with if you use used tanks. Even if you use new tanks, they're not the same dimensions as what's referenced in the book. Uh, there's no real consistency there. Uh, so having our own housing eliminates the need for any propane tanks. It makes the build go a lot uh, smoother. It's a much better fit uh, and uh, it's an overall better product. So basically the housing kit, it consists of five pieces. So there's two housing pieces for the reactor, one housing piece for the inside reduction chamber, and then two housings for the filter tank. Now we've, we've cut these in size to make it easier so as we're working in to the different layers, it's easier to reach in there and work with it. Much easier than it is to work with a propane tank where you have to practically crawl inside uh, to do the welding. So the, the, these housings make a lot more sense, make the build a lot easier to do uh, and, uh, and have a much tighter and better fit. Uh, now also these, these housings are designed to be the same dimensions as a propane tank. So if you still decide you want to do and build the original uh, design, but you don't want to use propane tanks, you can just buy this housing kit and then all the internal pieces are going to be exactly the same as referenced in the book. So you do have that option, uh, but we've added a lot of enhancements uh, and I recommend that you look at uh, just going with the version 3. Uh, there's a lot more enhancements besides just the housing kit. But basically these are the pieces. So what we have here, this is all 1 8 inch uh, mild steel, the same as what the uh, propane tanks are made out of, but all the holes are laser cut. Uh, so you don't have to med do any measurements or where these holes need to be. Uh, it's all uh, pre-cut for you, except for, for a couple holes where it's going to depend on uh, what configuration you're building. For example, if you're going to build an 8-jet configuration or a 10-jet configuration, uh, the ignition port height is going to be different by about a half inch. So we actually have it marked on the inside. This is the lower housing for the reactor. On the inside of this, we actually have etch marks that show you where the base plate goes. Where the, uh, uh, where the reduction tube goes, where the choke mantle goes. Air. So basically we've got these, and we've got it marked to where you need to drill the hole, whether you're building an eight jet configuration or a 10 jet configuration. So it eliminates the guesswork uh, there and everything is uh, you know, sized already to fit. Um, so basically we got the two components. We got the lower housing for the reactor, the upper housing for the reactor, the reduction tube, we have a bottom plate for the reactor. And on the filter side, we've got a lower filter housing, we've got an upper filter housing, and then we've got a uh, lower filter plate. So um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, everything uh, fits together just as you would on the original design, although it's a much better fit. Now one of the things, one of the things with uh, having these rolled parts is when we ship it, it's going to be rolled, but it's not going to be closed in the back. So you're going to have to close it and, and, and weld that seam in the back. And so just like with anything on the rolling, sometimes uh, things come, depending on the grain of the metal when it gets rolled, sometimes things are slightly under rolled or slightly over rolled and not quite around. Uh, so some of the things that you can do uh, to alleviate that. So here these, I, I've got these tacked on the seam here. So some of the, some of the tools that you can do, you can use a ratchet strap. kind of pull it in and then you can use for forms you can use any of these pieces like in this case this is the bottom plate I can put that in there I can use something like the choke mantle you know up here or I can use an air jacket they're all the same diameter so I can use these as I'm 
to bring it into round and then I want to tack that, get it into round and then do a nice solid weld down on that. So you can use the ratchet straps are really handy for pulling the metal in around the form. Uh, occasionally you have to push out. If there's an area that's not quite round, you can use a turnbuckle for that. So you can put the turnbuckle inside and then just use the turnbuckle, position it where you need to push out and then uh, adjust the turnbuckle. So between those two tools, you can kind of get it round to where you want, get it tacked, and then put a good solid weld down that seam. Okay. So you'll do that. You'll do that on all these pieces. Basically, they're all the all the housing pieces are about the same dimension. The inside reduction uh, chambers are slightly smaller, but you can use the same principles on that. So once you've got everything uh, welded and you're ready to go to start putting your pieces in, I'll do the next video on the assembly on both the reactor, where we'll build out the reactor, and then we'll build out the uh, filter and show you how all the parts fit together. We're going to go through a dry build, but you, which you'll want to do anyways. You want to always do a dry build, dry fit, make sure everything's fit before you do any welding. Uh, we'll go through and do that on the next video. But anyways, I just wanted to show you the, the housing kit. It's a huge improvement over the original design. Uh, makes the build go a lot faster, a lot tighter, and a lot cleaner. All right, thanks again, guys. Good luck on your builds, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.